and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. Almost 30 is one of the top rated lifestyle podcasts out there with over 12 million downloads, reaching people in more than 150 countries. This podcast was co-founded and brought to life by LA-based best friends, Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsick. Almost 30 initially started as a conversation about the transition between your 20s and your 30s, but it's become much more than that and explores topics such as health, wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, self-development, and more. And it's truly become a community and a movement. Krista and Lindsay, welcome to the show. Oh Thanks gosh. for having Thank us. You. <laughs> Love Excited a good bio here. read. You know. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You guys have done so much. It's really impressive. Can you just tell the audience a little bit about Almost 30 in your own words? Yeah, so Lindsay and I started Almost 30, you know, about five years ago now. We recorded on our closet floors for about a year before we launched the show. But really the impetus was, of the show was feeling really lost and feeling like as soon as we were in our late 20s, we didn't have the answers to anything we wanted the answers for in our life. We had mm -hmm. gotten to a point where we were in the jobs that we thought we would want or the careers that we thought we would want, but we still weren't happy. We still felt like we weren't ourselves. We didn't know how to navigate relationships. We didn't know how to um, dabble in spirituality. And so, you know, when we were at Bulletproof Coffee one day, we were having a really deep conversation that felt um, different than other conversations. And I said, you want to start a podcast? Mm -hmm. And we started recording our really deep, intimate, raw conversations on our closet floors. And then eventually a year later, we finally launched the show. And really the mission is to help support people in their spiritual evolution, which can sometimes feel really lonely. So we wanted to give them the community support and tools to feel like their best self. When you first started, you said you started filming in your closet. Well, you started recording in your closet, which is amazing. I love like the bootstrap element of that. Um, <laughs> Did you film a bunch of episodes and then release them over a, a period of time? Or how did you plan ahead for building this into the podcast it is today? Yeah, we started in Krista's closet and then in like a spare room in a house I was living in with a bunch of people. And, you know, that was a really important time. It was like an incubation time for this idea and this entity that is almost 30. And, um, we really got to hone our communication with each other. We got to like fine tune exactly what felt good and um, authentic to share uh, because there's so much we could cover, but we wanted right. to make sure that we were being super intentional. Um, and then just like the technical side of like working that out, you know, we didn't know what we were doing at all. I've never hosted or started a podcast, neither has she, but we both have backgrounds, interestingly, um, you know, in things that really have served us throughout the life of almost 30 thus far. I was, you know, an actress in theater, in production, and just kind of having like a sense of, you know, what we would need to get started. Krista's super business savvy. And, and so it really worked well, um, from the get go, um, but yeah, it was, it was after about a year of having these conversations that we were like, okay, you know, it didn't feel ready. It didn't feel like perfect. <laughs> it never at feels all. ready, but sometimes you just have to put it out there and get started, you know? Yes. Exactly. And that was, I think, you know, what a theme of ours that we we've stood by throughout where it might not be perfect and I might not feel ready, but there's a feeling of this is right. Mm -hmm. And intuitively we knew that putting this out there would then feed the inspiration, the next thing that we would do, the creativity going forward. So how did you decide on the topics you were gonna be talking about? Because I know that you had that really deep conversation. And sometimes when you have those conversations, there's a lot of different things that comes into your mind that you might wanna show on the podcast, but how do you fine tune it and choose like, okay, let's, let's start with this as the first episode and let's, evolve it to where it is today. Yeah, I think for us, we started more maybe relationships focused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. It was just kind of kind of Well, cuz relationships it, it in was your a late little... 20s are so Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, You're like Does It was he hilarious. Like me? Is he, you know, that kind of thing. So it yeah. was more relationship focused and then 
we were more health and wellness and now we're really more spirituality. And it was just a natural evolution of what we were going through. And I think that's what's so beautiful about entrepreneurship and about people starting their own podcast or starting their own business is that it's your business. It can reflect whatever stage you're at or whatever experience you're having. And that's what makes it the most authentic expression of you. And we've really let it expand and evolve in what we've talked about. You know, we've had conversations about feng shui. We've had conversations about aliens. We had conversations about um, racial inequality and white privilege, you know, years ago. So we've really let our conversation really be the guide. And we've meant to, or we're, we really tried to lean on more so us being the best versions of ourselves because that's what people are invested in rather than like the topic itself. Why did you guys decide to start a podcast and not do another form of media, maybe like a YouTube channel or a blog? I think, you know, there's a, a few reasons why, but there is something so special about taking the visual out of receiving information and listening. Mm -hmm. And I think it heightens, you know, your senses to what you're actually taking in. Um, I think we are so visually stimulated these days on social media, yeah. all the things. And so I find as a listener, you know, when I'm listening to a podcast or even an audiobook, sometimes mm -hmm. I am able to be more present. I'm not mm -hmm. as distracted. In, in a way you are more present because there's less stimulus. Whereas if you're on YouTube, sometimes there's all these videos that appear on the side and it's like a lot going on. Yeah, it's true. And I was even blogging before, you know, so oh, okay. I tried blogging. I was like doing the thing and I didn't love that. I felt like it was like so one dimensional because mm -hmm. I can say something online and I think we can see this very um, acutely right now with the internet, you know, someone could tweet something and have an intention behind it that is not interpreted by people totally. or vice versa. And I never felt like my true authentic meaning was coming through what I was saying. And when you hear me, you're really hearing me. You're hearing my tonality, you're hearing my cadence, you're hearing my enthusiasm, you're hearing my emotion. And so there's a real true sense of expression that is felt with the podcast that, um, you know, we really connected to. Mm -hmm. So what did you guys do to start the podcast successfully? Just start. And I know that's like kind of oversaid, but you know, mm -hmm. that was definitely an important piece of not waiting for that perfection. But I think taking it seriously, Yeah. you know, we really were struck by this idea mm -hmm. um, and felt really lucky to have been like tapped on the shoulder by this thing almost 30 and felt a responsibility. And so um, we showed up for it every single day. We were really in a season of intense learning. And so we really had to show up fully every single day. We were both working full-time jobs. We worked full-time jobs for the first two and a half years. Wow. And that really afforded us the you know, financial freedom to be mm -hmm. able to just pour into this creative endeavor without putting the pressure of this needs to make me money right now. Right. Um, and I think that's what gave it space to become what it has become. But yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's nice to have a partner. So we had the accountability of each other and like the motivation there, but we it would show up to record. We would have meetings. We would just really treat it like the business we knew it could become. Do you have any tips on working with partners in business? Cause I mean, I have some friends that have started businesses with partners and some have worked out, some have absolutely not and had a, have ended with legal issues. Yeah, I th we had to do it wrong for a while before. And I say wrong because I just think we were not aware of, you know, the impact that our relationship had on our flow within the business. Just to give you background, Krista and I met, you know, a year, pro like literally met and then started the podcast shortly after. So, wow. So um, this has been your whole relationship pretty much yes. is, is mm -hmm. the podcast. Exactly. But exactly. maybe that's a good thing. Cause like it thing. started mm -hmm. that way. And so there was yes. no, you know, preconceived notion yeah. right. or anything <laughs> like that. Totally. Exactly. And it's, it's just been, you know, the coolest thing as of late, you know, within the last year or so to focus on our relationship and get really, um, just get really clear about that connection and how important that is. Totally. So when you guys started the podcast, it was a kind of newer concept. 
And I consider you guys like pro podcasters. A lot of people want to start podcasts today. So I'd love to hear any advice you have. Yeah, of course. And um, we actually started, you know, Podcast Pro to just help people do that. So we do have like courses and programs that we work with people on. Check it out, everyone. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's (laughs) it's really good. Um, But you know, what I always say to people is that, you know, we were sort of building the car as it was moving. So Uh the idea and what we were creating was really fortified through us doing the thing and us recording. And I always say for people, rather than sort of focusing on your topic and kind of getting strategic with things, is just start recording yourself, start getting comfortable hearing yourself, whether you're using the um, recording app on your phone or whether you are getting a Yeti mic, whatever it is, just start getting comfortable speaking and having your voice heard, I think is really important. The point about that is just that it doesn't have to be, you know, we have really nice microphones now. It doesn't need to be the the top of the line Mm -hmm. out the gate. You know, like I don't want, we don't want that stopping you Mm -hmm. at all. And then also too, I always suggest for people to just keep their idea and their creative expression of what they want their podcast to be maybe to themselves for a little bit Mm. as they're ideating, as they're ruminating. It's really helpful to get advice and perspectives from people. But sometimes when you're bringing a dream or idea through people who haven't achieved their dreams or who haven't gone through their fullest expression of themselves can project on you and sort of dim what you're trying to create. When you guys first started putting out the episodes, it sounds like you were share, you share really personal stories. Um, and how were you, okay. Were you scared? Were you nervous to share these stories? Yeah. It, we kind of learned the hard way yeah. in terms of sh- oversharing in the beginning. And I think now we just share very vulnerably, but more thoughtfully. Um, but in the beginning, I mean, we were getting calls and texts from family and friends being like, yes. what the hell? And it was never like that we were talking. Shit. It was more, um, I didn't even know that about you mm-hmm. or things like that. And, um, yeah, I think that was like a lesson we had to learn. How do you deal with the the growth of it though? So in the beginning, you only have a few people listening, but then as time goes on, I mean, you guys have over 12 million downloads. You have this in over 150 countries. There's so many people that can go back to old episodes and, and listen to what you've said. And how do you, how do you use us, Sarah? Don't freak me out. <laughs> no, <laughs> Dude, come on. No, I've thought about Take that all, all the down. time. <laughs> Literally, I've thought, I think about that all the time. I'm like, you know, with the evolution of culture today and mm-hmm. sort of, you know, a newfound awareness of of things, you know, you think about when you're in high school, you're like, I did stuff that I would never do now. Yeah. And yeah. it is a little interesting to think about four years ago, what we were talking about or how different we were from, from today mm-hmm. and how much we've had growth in, but I can only be forgiving to myself and others mm-hmm. on their, their growth. And I can only focus on, you know, my my journey and my learning in real time. I think that's with any endeavor. If we get caught up in like, what if, you know, that kind of thing, it can kind of throw us off. So I choose to just focus on how can I be the best I can be in the moment? And how can I just love those parts of me that were saying totally a hundred times in the first episode? Uh, What are some of the ways that as podcasters, you can make a living doing this? We, from the beginning, when we started to monetize, it was about six months in Mm -hmm. or so. And Krista had leveraged some relationships she had with, um, you know, brands through her blogging um, experience. And so uh, we started to have conversations around ad spots on the podcast because we really loved these brands. We use them ourselves. So most of our revenue um, up until this day has been podcast ad spot revenue. And, you know, it's been such a learning learning how to cultivate those relationships, maintain those relationships, deliver, you know, a product that we are proud of, Mm -hmm. um, to build the trust with our, um, audience so that these campaigns are successful. Um, we've also just gotten really creative, um, and inspired along the way by our community. And we've launched and created courses, programs, workshops, live digital workshops this last year, in-person uh, events, live shows. So you've worked with big brands like Tory Birch and Hum Nutrition. How do you connect with those brands? It's interesting. A lot of our um, partner brands have actually been listeners of the podcast. Oh, cool. So, That's the best yeah. way to get them, honestly. It's actually the best. It mm-hmm. truly is. Like, 
I'd say 80% are listeners and fans and, and know of us. So they reach out through that way. So, um, but for people f- finding sponsors and brands, you know, just really aligning with people that you actually use. Mm-hmm. And I often tell, you know, podcasters that we work with, with coaching to think about walking through your day, you know, you wake up on a Casper mattress with Brooklyn and sheets and you brush your teeth with Tom's of Maine toothpaste and then, you know, X, Y, and Z. And that can really help you to figure out which brands would be a good fit and which brands would align with you because there's actually more brands that we interact with on a daily basis as people. Very interesting. So you talked a little bit about doing live workshops in 2020 because of the pandemic, you had to shift your business model a bit. Uh, So how have you changed things because of the pandemic? Yeah, at the top of 2020, we were planning to go on tour again. We had been on tour previously. It must have been so fun. It was was so fun. fun. And then we were going to host our annual retreat in Malibu. We were excited to do all of these in-person things. And so, um, you know, around March, we we knew that and we were planning a festival of sorts yeah. oh like it, it was oh, like a whole do those thing things as soon as this ends Ooh. honestly we couldn't have done a festival we yeah, i know we, i know honestly, i'm so grateful I like, up and we're like you know what God. you can do the festival i believe in you guys okay. i don't know I, well after this honestly, year I, we realized that you know being able to reach even more people digitally mm. is super powerful less lift you know, yes. like, I mean, less lift on our part. And they're like, we're you able- have to hire security for your festival. We're like, oh. what? <laughs> it's like things you never would have thought about. And you're never, like, oh, wow. Never, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Never. Security definitely is important. <laughs> yes. It's insane. But yeah, we just, thankfully, we were able to sh- pivot really quickly um, and basically take the templates of, you know, our in-person workshops and events and bring that digitally to, you know, a zoom event. So we started the new paradigm digital workshop series where we brought our favorite teachers, healers, and experts, you know, in the spaces of spirituality Mm -hmm. and health and wellness and just anything and everything really, uh, to have these online gatherings. Um, and it was rad. I mean, there were people from all over the world joining for healings, for connection, Um, just to learn more about themselves, you know, in a time when it was really heavy and really, um, yeah, you need that connection because like taking away all socialization is, it's us as human beings, we're social people. So it's so difficult to not have those moments. And it sounds like what you guys did is create those moments. Yes, it was digital, but it's, it's still connecting with people. So what is your next plan for Almost 30 podcast? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this year really just hit home how important community connection mm-hmm. um, and, and learning and community is, um, especially for um, our female audience. And so we are working on a really special way for all of us to connect um, on a platform that is uh, – safe and inclusive and just provides a space for people to be themselves, to be vulnerable, um, to have the resources that they need, you know, for their evolution and have a really good time. Like it's going to be, I'm really excited. It's it's happening in a couple months. So that sounds very exciting. And it definitely sounds like something that is very much needed in the world today. So I'm so glad that you're creating it. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about like your social presence and how you promote the podcast, um, on social media, by the way, just to get the word out there? Yeah. Social media. I mean, social media for us has been, you know, one of the greatest catalysts for our growth and for really having a two way conversation with our community and with our listeners and with our audience. And that's what we really use it, you know, as is as, um, market research, as connection, as um, an information gathering tool, which is market research, but we just use it for a lot of different ways, not only just to promote and market the show, even though that's really what it's done. Um, It's an extension of the brand. So for anyone that has a podcast, you know, we always talk about when we're coaching people, if you have a channel that you're working on through Instagram or through Twitter, whatever preferred platform that you're on, to really double down and use that as a promotion channel for your podcast. You can also create a separate channel, which is what Lindsay and I did for almost 30 podcasts on Instagram, which now kind of lives and breathes on its own without Lindsay and I. But I think it's, you know, instrumental. So we'll promote shows, we'll promote content related to the show, we'll promote funny memes, we'll promote connection among community. And it really should just be like, 
that extension of the brand. So what's one piece of advice that you'd give to everyday entrepreneurs like yourself? I would say that as much as I've invested in my own personal work, whether that's therapy or whether that's intentional rest or whether that's being honest in my relationships and, and having good friends around me and nourishing my body and nourishing my health, whatever that work may be for people, I've seen it pay dividends in our business. So if I'm heavily meditated, I'm able to make much more rational decisions. I'm able to be much more thoughtful. I'm able to be better to our team. Or if I'm well rested, I'm able to show up better in our business. Or if I've taken a full break for a day, I'm able to show up better in our business. Or if Lindsay and I are having really hard, honest conversations, conversations about our relationship. We're able to really show up in the podcast better. So as much as I've invested in myself, we've seen it in almost 30 and everything that I do. So I always just want to, you know, note to entrepreneurs that you can really make this an extension of you and to really do the work on yourself through the whole process, because your business brand, whatever is really an extension of you. That's beautiful. And I completely agree with you on that. I think if you're not in a good place yourself, then it's really hard to make your business be in a good place. I mean, you've seen that over and over again with, with many businesses that there's issues with the leadership and it kind of is just a domino effect where the whole business becomes unraveled. So investing in yourself, investing in your health, whether that's physical, mental, so important. Uh, what is one thing that you'd say you learned along the way that you wish you could go back and tell those girls sitting in the closet <laughs> <laughs> recording that first podcast. I think for me personally, and I've talked about this on the podcast, but just trusting myself, um, you know, along the way, trusting that, you know, my gifts, what I'm interested in, what lights me up is really, really valuable to what we're doing. I think when you start a business, it can um, hold up a mirror to some of your biggest insecurities and shadows. And so, um, while I was working on those, I also wish I would have just honored and illuminated more of the things that are really great about me. Uh, where do you guys get your inspiration from for for just the topics of the episodes? And, and on that note, are there any people like idols that you have that continuously inspire you to create? Um, I think just a lot of our own curiosity inspires mm -hmm. what we talk about on the show, a lot of our own growth, like in real time. Mm -hmm. um, Krista and I share solo episodes and often that is something that we've either just processed or maybe going through. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Like I definitely recommend having people that, you know, you look up to and who inspire you, but I think so much of our content creation of our next moves and uh, what we aspire to be like kind of comes from within us. And um, I try not to idolize people because I know they're humans too. You guys have had so many huge people on your show. How do you get them on the show? Yeah, so, we got a lot of no's. Got a lot of no's at first. We got mm -hmm. get no's for two years and just keep trying. And then eventually maybe they'll say yes. <laughs> um, we had that a lot. You know, we had, as an example, Marie Forleo on last year. And she said no to us, you know, two years prior. And you just kind of keep trying. And we really have found that it is a fit when it's meant to be a fit, even though that's easier to say on, on this side of people actually saying yes. Yeah. Um, but. I do think that it is finding creative ways to truly connect with people, whether it's through DM or email by being just really personable and truthful and being like a human, not like just giving like a page long pitch. Yeah. Not like mass emailing a template. What is your proudest almost 30 moment? Going out on tour and, you know, the tour itself I was proud of, but I think the reception that we received was just so heartwarming mm -hmm. and we were having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people from the community that just confirmed for me that we were truly on our path and that what we were doing was actually helping people. And I just loved that. I was like, wow, this is actually the, this is actually what it's about. It's been so wonderful speaking with you guys today. Is there anything else that y you'd like our viewers and our listeners to know before we wrap up this interview? 
Yeah, I just want them to know about Podcast Pro. So Lindsay and I, from recording on our closet floors to now, you know, we never felt like there was a resource that was comprehensive and real and authentic. And we wanted to create one for people that want to get their voices heard through a podcast. So Podcast Pro helps people to launch, to grow, or to monetize their dream podcast. So you can go to Podcast Pro or you can go to yourpodcastpro.com. It's been wonderful having you guys on the show. Thank you for everyone that joined us and thanks to everyone who tuned in today. If you want to learn more about Almost 30 Podcasts, you can visit almost30.com and be sure to follow them on Instagram at Almost 30 Podcasts. It's Krista and Lindsay Simsick. That is all for this edition of School of Hustle. Keep up with our other episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard today, please leave a review, share with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We will see you next time. Bye.